What's up, guys? I'm Matt Reisinger. I'm Wade Bakewin. And I'm Steve Basic. And we got some people missing. Who's not here? We got Zach. We've got Jake and Will King. Golly, we got a lot to see here. We're at JLC 2023. Let's go see what's new and cool. So let's get going. All right, guys, Ross Trithui, you recognize the name. Ross comes from an all-star family yeah, of right. HVAC <laughs> experts. Ross is about yeah. to give a demonstration here, but he's got a really cool demo on indoor air quality. Ross, what are you yeah. showing over here? Yeah, so I got a uh, ERV behind me, yep. right? So this unit, obviously, as we know, I can turn it on. I can see this unit kick on. ECM motors, and you've seen it before. You know, this is a Panasonic Intellibalance. Yep. Air in, air out. And what I also have, though, is these smart controllers over here. So these are made from Swidget. Okay. Okay, so this one right here does motion, temperature, and relative humidity. This one does IAQ in terms of VOCs. Okay. And this one does just motion. So let's think about it, right? Like, you're in, like, the kitchen. If it sees humidity rise, I might want to kick on the bath fan, right? Ah. If I'm cooking in the kitchen, let's see, I have an air quality event. Yep. I might want to kick my ERV onto boost mode. So as an example, I can take Purell, right? As an example, this is filled with VOCs, of course. Purell is uh, real right? high on the VOCs. So if I do this, what's going to happen is this unit is going to kick onto boost mode, and you're going to see those telltales really start flying. Holy cow, is that right? Yep. Watch so this. this switch, which might be in your kitchen, is talking back to the Panasonic ERV and saying, hey, jump it into boost mode. That's right. So it's all wireless. That's it's all cool. wireless behind the scenes. So this unit right now is communicating back to the main brain, and it's gonna kick it on to boost mode. I haven't liked your demo, Ross, where you're able to show, you know, this is red, this is sucking out of the house. That's right. And this is blue, which is providing fresh that's air right. in. Yep. And then on this side, this is the exhaust, or pardon me, that's the fresh air in and the exhaust out of the house, probably? Outside air inlet, exactly right. Exhaust air to outside, this is all going to the outside, which I like that it's on the same side of the unit. Yeah. Right? It's usually easy to terminate on the sidewall that yep. way, yep. you know, from an air conditioning. And you're right, this is the pool point, this is the fresh air, this is being distributed, getting all that fresh air in the house. How does this device talk to this Panasonic unit? So these devices are all Wi-Fi based. Okay. So they're connected to the Wi-Fi network. Once they're connected to the Wi-Fi network, it's all through Wi-Fi communication back to the main brain. The main brain happens to be right over here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like that it's uh, it kind of realizes, hey, here's what we need to happen without homeowner input. I've got a an ERV at my house that has low voltage switches everywhere. Yep. And I swear yep. my kids never touch it in their right. bathrooms. Right. Right. But of course, the beauty of an ERV is if they're connected to your bathrooms, they're always pulling a little bit out. That's right. So, so if they don't run the bath fan, it's not a big problem. It's and not it a does huge it problem. automatically through the humidity sensor. Right. But think about all the other use cases, right? So gas fireplace. Let's say you happen to put a direct vent gas fireplace in your house like this. Yep. Let's say someone turned it on, you turn the switch on, they leave the room. The motion sensor sees that there's been no motion in that room for an hour, or whatever you set it for, turn it off. Oh, that's so a really a safety. good. So it's a safety. So there's all these other use cases and scenarios where you can apply these really smart controls. Cool. to make the house work automatically, and we call it the autonomous building. Movement. And Swidget is the manufacturer of these? This is Swidget for these guys, Panasonic for the ERV, obviously the lower door behind you from RetroTech. Yeah, great awesome. products. Yeah. Ross, how can yeah. people find out more about your company? So I'm at uh, TE2 Engineering. You can follow, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, um, and obviously on the web. TE2 Engineering on Instagram? Yeah, that's awesome. right. Awesome. Thank that's you, right. Ross. Really yep. appreciate it, brother. Awesome. All right, Sashco Booth at JLC 2023. You've heard me talk about these products. Sashco makes some really good products. I used Moreflex at my house, which is a uh, sanded caulking uh, up against brick. Works really well. Slab, this is intended for uh, concrete. And so if you've got a, a joint or a crack in your concrete, slab. Clean Seal, I use this in my master bath and it's looking awesome. It's got an active enzyme in there which keeps it clean over time. And of course, this is the gateway drug that got me into Sashko, uh, big stretch caulking and just an absolutely bomber caulking. It literally stretches crazy compared to all the other products in the industry. This is a really, really good caulk. But check this out, Lexel, which honestly I didn't know much about until just recently, Super clear product that sticks to just about everything, and they've got a killer display here that I really like. So let me zoom in a little bit. 
Silestone. That's a tough substrate. Granite. It's going to stick to that. Porcelain tile. Carrera. Laminates. Composite countertops. Glass. Oh, check that out. That's wild. Steel. Aluminum. <laughs> Your wife's credit cards. Not recommended. That's pretty funny. PVC. Copper. Electrical conduit. Black iron pipe. Galvanized pipe. Silicone. Oh, no, actually, this one doesn't stick to silicone. Almost nothing sticks to silicone. Not even silicone itself. Asphalt shingles. Works great. Drywall. Concrete. Faux stone. Brick. It's going to stick to wood, acrylic, and even slate. That is a great little display to show you some awesome properties. Check this out. New from Sierra Pacific Wave. This is their flex screen. What do you think? Will you uh, see if you can put it in for me? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the deal on this is it's real flexible. And if Wade's on the second or third story of the house, uh, in theory, he should be able to put this in right away. Now, this is Wade's first time. Let's see if he can do it. Don't worry, Wade, this is an intelligence test. Check that out. He snapped right in on that side. I'm gonna help him on this side because he didn't quite get it in. But what's cool is it's flexible. How cool is that? It's pretty slick. It's pretty I slick. like it. Yeah, it's pretty it's slick. It's an option on any Sierra Pacific window now. Uh, I like it. Flex screen, Sierra Pacific. Okay, we are at Fasten Master and we're gonna talk about the Icon Screw Joist. It's a truss made with some screws and two by fours. Half the weight of a two by 10, very similar spans, very similar cantilever. Uh, you're not gonna get it anywhere right now in the United States except for the Northeast, you know, around here at JLC. They're pre-coating with this top coating for a water membrane on the top. You can uh, effectively top cord hang a truss on your rim joist. You could set these by yourself because they have a tail on both ends you could set in place. But half the weight you can push framing members through. So if you have a, we're working on a deck right now that we wanted a very narrow profile. So we actually inset a very heavy beam at the end. We can do that here without having to expand that space. There's no threads in the middle of the, um, the screws because you only need the threads at both ends to hold everything in place. They're mounted from below. So even this top coating isn't penetrated by their fasteners. This is one of those, like, how come I didn't think about that before? So stop by Fasten Master if you're, if you're gonna catch this. You're gonna have to get it in the Northeast, sorry. Bill level, 43 feet of brand new Icon Joyce, which you don't get in Seattle. So here you go. Got it. All right, y'all, I've ragged on fireplaces because <laughs> I don't like the idea of a flue through a house and a wood burner fireplace just drafting all the time. However, I gotta say, these electric fireplaces have come a long way. I have one in my Lance Camper RV. It looks kind of similar to this. It has a little uh, heat setting on here. You press the uh, heat button, if I can get the uh, heat to work. That red dot means that there's basically a hair dryer in here that turns on. And if I'm reading the brochure right, it'll output 5,000 BTUs, so it would heat a room nicely. But what I like about this is there's nothing to the, there's no connection to the outside. You literally could hang this on the wall if you wanted to. Ooh, that green is not good. I wouldn't do the green. I like the blue. It's modern. Uh, I suspect they make some of these that are a little more traditional looking, so to speak. Let's see, what's, where's the red? I like the red one the best for some reason. This is kind of cool. Simple Fire by Heat and Glow, uh, fireplaces.com. I'm not sure pricing, but I suspect these are pretty reasonable. Uh, and again, no connection to the outside, no flu, nothing. It's a great choice if you have to have a fireplace. Sedge with Festool has a really cool saw <laughs> to show you guys. Now, what do you call this? Okay, it's the, the model number is the CSC50, but everybody's calling it the Sustainer saw because everything fits in the Sustainer. How about that? Yeah, it's wicked. So check this out. Okay. Come around this backside and show us how to adjust this. Okay, so it's got a digital readout. Okay. And I'm going to rip a filler strip out of this board right here. So I'm, I'll mess around with this a little bit. You can get this where it'll actually move. I'm going to put it in park first. Okay, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to go, you know what? So what does park mean? Okay, that means I can remove the guard oh, okay. and I'm ready in the blade changing. Uh, but I'm okay. going to take it like this, Matt. And let's see, I have this preset here. You can change those, but that's a uh, 30 millimeters high. Okay. 
okay? And it's at a minus 10. So say I'm on a job site, I want to rip a filler strip, right? Yep. Okay. You want a little back bevel on that filler strip. Absolutely. Minus 10. So I can do a quick scribe on you it. You can scribe it to the wall. And I just have to hold the button. And, and watch this. When he presses the button, the blade is going to move without him touching anything. There's two servo motors. There it goes. So check it out. The blade is moving on its own with a servo. By the way, this is a battery saw, isn't it? It's all cordless, and I actually have it hooked to the cordless dust extractor, too. Oh my gosh. So there's yep. two batteries right here. Yep. Cordless dust extractor. Bluetooth connection so it knows when it turns on, right? Yep, and the only thing I gotta do in the morning is walk over to the dust extractor like this, hit the Bluetooth uh, sync, and I just turn this on, and now the dust extractor comes on. Rip a board for us, will you? I'm gonna take it right to two inches or 50 millimeter. Okay, so we're ripping a filler strip on yep. the job. I don't know if you can hear how quiet that is. That's really quiet. I'm not, I'm sure that you probably require or want people to wear hearing protection, but I'm not sure you need it with this saw. That's crazy. Look what the uh, push stick is. It's stored right on the fence, right where you need that's to awesome. have it. And that's all it is. And now, here we go. Check it out. Ripped right there. What do you think, brother? I came over to check it out. Aaron, that is really nice, that isn't is it? beautiful. That's impressive. I've been waiting to see this thing for like... I don't know. A, ma a master carpenter like Aaron Bunch should definitely have a saw like this. A master builder like Matt Rogers. <laughs> it's when when we came up, I have to admit though, we joked that we had said, I think I could fit that in my wife's purse. It's so tiny. And yet it's so functional. Before we go though, show me how this works. Sure. We got a mitigation gauge in here. And when I slip it in, there's a little toggle here which actually locks it in. And then I can release it right here, and you got a really nice sliding table. So I'm going to remove Good this. Gracious, that is. So and I'm going nice. to take it to another preset. Edge. I'm going to bring it up. I'm just bringing it all the way up, 48 millimeters. Okay. And you'll see it'll reset itself at 90. Come all the way up. I'll just take this scrap right here. And one of the things we know, and especially if you have it at a high angle, say 60 degrees, that like on a miter saw, it wants to push it like this. Yep. So what we have is. Our engineers, I always say, they always think of everything. Yeah, they do. Look at that clamp. Holy cow. So I can take this. And now you clamped it down, it's also safer for you. I don't want to say on video I can do it with my eyes closed, because you wouldn't want to, but nope. you could. Wow. Sedge, that's an impressive tool. Thanks, man. We'll put a link to this in the description below. Now, check this out. This caught my eye. They've got a sawzall here with dust collection on it. No way. Yeah. Does it actually work? I don't know. CJ, I can run a rip. All right. There we go. Not bad. Not perfect, but not bad at all. Pretty slick. Golly, that's crazy. When you're up overhead, this is positioned in a way, all that material that's falling down is yeah. going to go right down into that yeah. into that hose. And even if it catches 95%, it's still better than the yeah, dust shower you're used to getting. Yeah, the man dust. The man, <laughs> man berry dust. Man glitter. Yeah. Pestle's got some cool stuff at uh, JLC 2023. All right, Steve, let me show you what's new at the Tamlin booth. First off, check this out. Mounting blocks, they call it the extreme block. Steve, I used a couple of these randomly on my shed because uh, I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on some custom blocks. Uh, I had these uh, there and they actually work pretty well. What do you think about this, Steve? This is pretty cool. Look at water management approved, down and out. Any yeah. water that comes down the system has the ability to drain out. And these wings prevent your siding from closing that gap up. They kind of stop it. Yeah. And then also, if moisture were to get back there he was showing me look it even has a little bit of a weep on the back of the block yeah. the moisture could weep out it's kind of neat That's uh, very cool i would say it does not look as awesome as some other uh, custom blocks that i've made before but i really like how straightforward it is yeah next thing i want to say from here check it out they make their own vents now they'll they'll uh ship these to you in either galvanized or stainless they look like another manufacturer uh that i've used before i really like that yeah. But probably the coolest thing we saw here, check this out. They've got a new rain screen product they're calling Tamlin Wrap. They've got a 10 millimeter version and a six millimeter version, Steve. This one's slightly thicker. They tell me that these little dots back here are non-compressive. And yeah. this one I'm assuming is probably a little bit more of a drain than a yeah. dry, right? Yeah, I think the difference between them is that this one is 
totally based in draining potential. Yep. This one is based in draining potential and drying potential yeah. upwards, given the additional space there. And I believe, I believe Canadian code is 10 millimeters. So I think that's right. the 10.1 gets you to breach just over that threshold. And so the idea is you're going to put this over your house wrap, over your zip system, whatever. This isn't your WRB. This is just giving you an air gap or a drainage gap behind your cladding. And this fabric means that you could use it for a stucco assembly too. Pretty yeah. cool from Tamlin at JLC 2023. All right, Will King here at the Sonos booth. Will, tell me about Sonos for builders. Man, Sonos audio is incredible. So most people know Sonos by the Play One speaker, just a standalone speaker that's just gonna hook to your Wi-Fi. But yep. what people don't know is that it has tons of integration in your whole house. And that's something that I do in my house, my office, and, and all my investment properties. Not all of them, but some of them. We've done everything. Like the Sonos amp is one that I always go to. So customers always want in ceiling speakers. So whether it's on the back porch, their living room, their kitchen, whatever it might be, this is the easiest way to make in ceiling speakers work. And it has an input from your TV, so you can have audio input, so then your ball game is coming into the Sonos and playing over your speakers. But then once it's there, you can also then group it to your other zones in your house. So if this is in your bathroom or your kitchen, now you have audio both in your living room and then over in your kitchen or your whole house, depending on how many of you have. Sound bars are great. They have several different models. We've used a lot of these before. Uh, you can mount them to your TV, below your TV, to the wall. They have different brackets for that. And then even the subwoofers are absolutely incredible. This is that. This is a brand new one. This isn't is a new it? one. Yeah, this yeah. is their mini sub. It's tiny. I haven't even used this one yet, but I can tell you the big one is just it'll rattle the house. It's so awesome. But it's a great system. I think all builders need to be aware of just the power that Sonos has, and yeah. then just the user-friendly install. I mean, me, I, me as the builder, I install them all the time. Great, great product. The, and for me, Will, you know, I, I started with one of these at my house, or maybe one of these small guys. Yep. Realized how much I liked it, and then it was time to build a new house. Realized, oh goodness, I didn't know Sonos has a partnership with Sonens. Yep. So all these in-wall speakers that I've got at my house, That's right. they're all Sonos. They come into these Sonos amps. I actually hooked most of these up in my house myself, yep. and I've been in my house well now for 18 months. Totally rock star reliable. I've yep. had zero problems Super uh, with my Sonos yep. system. Zach Detmore, JLC 2023 with Dan Jr. Boss Hammer. Yep. Tell me why this hammer is better than the Stanley Hammer I've had for 30 years. Number one, we are the only 100% American made, 100% American owned all titanium framing hammer on the market. Nobody else can say that. Other than that, we are also the only framing hammer and squaring system all in one. Take our hammer, put it up against what you're squaring off of. Yep. That claw, that shoulder, and that head right there line up, creating a perfect 90. We can score all the way across two by 12. You pivot off your claw to use all your angle cuts, anything out to 55 degrees. So if I want a 35 degree angle off of what I just squared, there's 35 degrees. This side here, we've got a five inch stick rule off of that flat surface, out to five inches. I can get a quick reference, anything out to five, I want a four inch rip, there it is. We can also use our hammer for a layout. If I move it over here, if I'm squaring that across to lay out a plate, I mark that. That's an inch and a half wide, slide over, there's my stud pocket. This hammer is 16 ounce head weight, 16 inches end to end. I butt that up against that line right there. There's my next 16 inch layout. Flip the hammer over. I've got angle cuts again on this side, common rafter cuts for cutting trusses. All I have to do is pivot my hammer the other way. I need a 612 pitch. There's all my truss tails cut at a 612. We've got an anti ring rib on our claw right here. So this thing's not going to sound like a tuning fork. We've got a magnetic nail starter in the head of our hammer. They do up to a duplex headed nail. Dual side nail pullers on top so you can hook on that nail and pull it out to get it started with your, so you can hook on it with your claws. Another side nail puller right here. You can hook on that nail, roll it all the way out. A built-in quick 45 cast line right there. So if I buck this up against here, there's a quick 45 degree line. Rubber over molded handle, this thing's not gonna roll on you. We got through holes where the rubber gets injection molded. It is never gonna slip up or down because of the cast hubs. We have a tether hole right there for guys that have to tether their hammer. And also on this hammer, last but not least, 13 it's millimeter six point socket. It's the best part for changing your saw blade because we lost our wrench a long time ago. All right, so at the, at the build show, we're really into uh, advanced framing. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna recommend you make a 24 inch long hammer. A 24 inch titanium right? hammer. And then for the layout. I'll, I'll relay that to the Think about boss. it, Okay. right? Like something like this. Okay. Would be good. I'll get duct tape. 
All right, good job. Thank Thanks you. A lot. <laughs> hey guys, JLC 2023 over at the Thermal Building Supply booth here with some pretty cool products. We're going to be talking about this thermal tight um, exterior insulation product. I got Max here with me. Max, what are we, exactly are we looking at? Yeah, so this is a really cool product, guys. This is basically a GPS, so graphite enhanced EPS foam with a WRB adhered to the outside of it. So what's unique about this product is that the glue is also vapor open, so it doesn't destroy the properties of the foam itself. So what's really unique about this is when we're going to our wall system here, we can go right onto the OSB plywood, the shear wall, with the foam. This comes in an R5, R7, or R10. So rather than using a product like a Zip R, you can just go right to an OSB with this. Um, it's also a little bit more effective than doing the combination of a blue skin and then a foam on the outside because your WRB layer is actually on the outside of the building, which is just a better performance. The other kind of neat party trick is that this comes with a flap system on all four sides of the sheet. So when you go to install it, we have a double stick tape. So that double stick tape comes down here, gets peeled, and then you roll this seam and you're done. You're not taping the seam here anymore like you would on a zip. It's just a cleaner install and it helps against the um, shingling issues. Yeah, and well said, Max. And what I like about it too, and you can kind of see it here in the, in the image, and when we're building on the coast and we're in that higher wind zone, something like a zip R sheathing, right, is very difficult for us to use because we're not getting the shear out of it. So we're gonna be putting our you know CDX plywood on the house and instead of having two layers to have another layer of that OSB on the zip R sheathing, you could use something like this product here to go over that plywood and not kind of you know, overkill it. Right? That's absolutely right. And, and the way I look at it is I'd rather spend the money on the insulation as opposed to the OSB. Yeah, right? exactly. Put the money where the performance is. Exactly. And where can people, if people are interested in this, where could they find this product? Local lumberyard or? Yeah, so Thermal Building Supply is a distributor for New England. We'll sell through any of your favorite local lumber yards. Um, we can be reached at, at Thermal Building Supply on Instagram. Um, and my name's Max. Feel free to reach out. All our info is on the website on both yeah, this product and our Thermal Buck product. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate, Appreciate it. your time, Wade. Thank you. Thank you. So, Matt, this is a really cool product. Hadn't seen this before, man. What is it? It's a rubber gasket that goes in between composite decking. So huh. if you ever noticed like uh, on the lake projects, like a dock that's in this picture behind us, there's also like living space underneath. Okay. So like waterproofing this has always been a challenge. You know, how many times have you built like the under, I've done a under the deck the roof systems that drain into a gutter yeah. that are a pain to clean? These guys from Dexter Dry have made a gasket basically and whatever material, whatever um, decking you're using, it matches the profile. So like this is a Trex material, I believe, yeah. but it's gonna pop in between them. And as you're installing it, you basically pop that into the, to the tongue of this board and they have their own, That's they call wild. it the blue claw and it's gonna compress it. And so this one's already got it on okay, there and you can you. see. So then that, it's just like a, we've seen that material or that, that before, it just basically clamps on and, yeah, and then compresses this together mm -hmm. so that gasket is in compression. Yeah. And then what do you do about screwing the deck board down? Now? So it's all face screwed, it looks like, and they're just using oh, plugs. Oh, I see, they got some plugs on yeah. there. Gotcha. But yeah, and this, I think this comes on like a 50 foot roll. I mean, you can see it right there. It's in a pretty good size roll. So That's you take wild. a whole piece, compress it, and then you end up with a nice watertight deck. And so. you do a lot of docks, I suspect. We do. I've seen a lot of your lake houses. Yep. Uh, and they've got a picture one right here. It does make sense. You know, mm -hmm. you got your jet ski down below or your boat. You don't want to yeah. get it wet through the yep. deck. Do this up above. But if a couple yep. of drips came through, it wouldn't be that. Yeah, I would say even if it's 90%, we're going to yeah. be in good shape. But, you know, we've, a lot of people have gone to concrete decks where we live on the lake for their docks. And it's because they can waterproof it. But we all know it's going to yeah. crack and still leak. Yeah. But this is a, like, better finished look. It's softer on your feet. And now we can waterproof it. Really simple, and our framers can just do that when they go. So that's pretty cool. I was it's impressed, man. Dexer Dry, D E X E R D R Y dot yep. Pretty cool. All right, we're over here at JLC 2023 at the Bigfoot booth, Matt. Now, you're familiar with the Bigfoot base, right? I've never used one of these you before. Haven't. You know, I don't have any frost line in Texas. Oh, right, So right. this is not a thing for me. Talk right. to me about this way. All right, so we use this quite often, right? It's a big time saver. Um, and this is your standard application, right? Bigfoot base, your sauna tube. The problem sometimes with this is if you leave it in the ground too long, this gets wet, uh, soggy and soft. Disintegrates. And it'll start to cave in if you're backfilling around it, right? So uh, a lot of times this has to be timed where you're you're digging the hole, getting your footing in, 
put your sauna tube in, you've got concrete coming in a matter of a couple days. Gotcha. But now, you can wait several weeks or months if you want with Bigfoot's uh, new tube here. So this tube is some kind of plastic that's not crushable, right? Not crushable. And so you could excavate, drop this down, backfill the same day, and then you could pour whenever you want. Set it and forget it, baby. That's what we say. That's pretty right? nice. Put it right in. It's got the integrated cover on it, mm -hmm. so you're not gonna get material in there. And it's got a little handle here, so after, when you're ready to go, you can cut this top right off. Yeah. What they recommend is if you have your concrete, top of concrete, coming to, let's say, this point here, uh -huh. you cut a little sight hole in here, place your concrete up to your sight hole, get that nice and level, and then after, you can take a sawzall and a little bit of an angle and cut that right off and have a nice, oh. clean break. And another advantage of so this... then you wouldn't have a concrete tube, you'd have this black, nice tube around which, here. Which you could take just your regular, like, uh, utility knife, right. and you can cut this and, and peel it off. It's not got it. it's not super difficult to take off. That's kind of neat. The concrete versus the cardboard, this, this absorbs water, yeah. this doesn't. And we know concrete likes water to cure, so... Sure. This has a nice, clean finish to it after the concrete sets up. So pretty, pretty cool product right. over here, Bigfoot. JLC 2023, what do you think, guys? I think this is one of the best JLCs I've ever been to, and I've been here, coming here a long time. A few people knew you here, Steve. Yeah, a couple people. <laughs> I think there's one or two that knew you. Four, actually. Four, thanks. Four, four. yeah, I'm up to four followers now, Steve. Four. Well, Steve, the is, <laughs> Steve has been busting Will all and day. They, were, were they both twins? <laughs> yeah, they were twins. They were my employees. But yeah. one of the four he's counting is me. One of the four he's counting is me. Oh, but that's all right. <laughs> We've had a really fun show, y'all. If you're not following these guys on the Gram or on Build Show Network, please do it. We got Wade Paquin, we got Will King from High Cotton Homes, we got Steve Basic, of course, doing the Build Show Build Boston series. That's it, 2023 JLC Live. That's a wrap. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us all on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show. Build Show.